Welcome to Coin Retrospectives, short histories of old coins. And here we've got the Roosevelt die minted from 1946 to present. It's gone 76 years without a major design change, making it the longest continuously minted design in United States history. Designed in 1945 by John R. Sinek, well, at least half of it anyway, the obverse honors the late President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. After his death in 1945, it was decided that Roosevelt would be the face of the new 10 cent piece due to his work with the March of Dimes, an organization that was founded by Roosevelt to combat polio. Roosevelt, whose political career saw him win an unprecedented four presidential elections, founded the organization in 1938 as the National Foundation for Infant Paralysis. Senek's initials can be found at the base of Roosevelt's bust to the left of the date, which gave rise to a rumor that the initials instead stood for Joseph Stalin. Of course, this is complete nonsense, but it was quite the pervasive rumor of the late 1940s, especially with the release of the Cynic-designed Franklin Half Dollar just two years later. The reverse of the coin features an olive and an oak branch with a torch to symbolize liberty. There's no debate that Cynic designed the reverse, but as for the obverse, there is a claim that Cynic plagiarized the work of the sculptor Selma Burke to create the bust of Roosevelt. Proponents of this theory point to the fact that Cynic may have taken his depiction of the Liberty Bell on his design for the Franklin Half Dollar from another designer without giving credit. However, Cynic did sketch Roosevelt from life in 1933 for his first presidential medal and may have used that sketch to prepare the dime instead. Unfortunately, we will never truly know. The machinations of time have made it nigh impossible to validate or debunk Burke's claims. The Roosevelt dime was released into circulation on the 30th of January, 1946, which would have been Roosevelt's 64th birthday. It was immediately a popular coin Demand remained strong and many were saved, in particular the 1955 series, when production dipped a little due to a sagging economy. In 1965, in response to silver prices skyrocketing, the Mint made the decision to make the dime and the quarter out of base metal instead. Going from 90% silver to 92% copper, and shifting the Mint mark from the reverse to the obverse starting in 1968, stands out as the only design changes to the Roosevelt dime going all the way back to its inception in 1946. To this day, the Roosevelt design is much the same as it was ever since it entered circulation. Up until 1979, the Philadelphia Mint did not put a P mint mark on its dimes or quarters, but starting in 1980, it was added in the usual place above and to the right of the date. However, in 1982, it was discovered that some dimes of that year did not have mint marks. In excellent condition, these dimes can sell for upwards of $200. And in 1996, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Roosevelt dime, the mint at West Point released about a million and a half dimes with a W mint mark. These sell for about $20 in decent condition. From 1946 to 1964, the Roosevelt dime was 90% silver and 10% copper, and from 1965 onwards, it's 91.67% copper and 8.33% nickel. The silver dime has the mint mark to the left of the base of the torch, while the clad coinage has it above the date. Today, you can find these coins still in circulation, with President Roosevelt still smiling at you, just as he has for the last 76 years. And that about wraps it up here for the Roosevelt Dime. If you'd like, please consider subscribing. I post new videos every Sunday educating you, the viewer, about United States coinage and its fascinating history. So go leave your two cents in the comments and have a wonderful day.